Watch this clip and listen to the sort of lifestyle that this woman has been living and the sort of lifestyle that she feels entitled to live in the future. So I've decided to like, for the first time ever, like start dating. And that the term like, like dates have always freaked me out. I've always just like hung out with guys and like whatever, like in college, didn't really do the boyfriend thing anyway. So it wasn't a big deal. And now I'm 25, just went through some recent, like, very traumatic drama with a guy. And I just, like, realized, like, that's not the kind of person I want to be with. And then I also realized, like, I haven't put myself out there enough. And so that's what I'm going to do now. Um, and, like, I want to be taken out. And, like, I want to be spoiled in the sense of, like, I want a guy to, like, think of something fun to do for me. Like those types of things and like not just minimal effort which is what guys who hang out do men are not going to want to spoil you and any man who feels like he's putting in more than minimal effort is going to feel cheated i'm sorry to say this but i've got bad news for this woman because that blank slate that she wants for her future is not going to happen did you notice that she said that she never had boyfriends in college and now at age 25 she suddenly decided that she's going to start dating. But does anybody out there seriously believe that this woman hasn't been enjoying a lot of male attention? Of course not. It's just that she's been doing casual hookups. So far in her life, it has been easy to sleep with her. You don't have to commit to her. You don't have to be her boyfriend. You don't even have to take her out on dates. You just need to hang out. The price of sex with her has been very low. But now at age 25, she wants to raise that price. Suddenly she wants commitment. She wants a boyfriend. She wants a man to spoil her, to take her out on dates. But men are not going to want to pay that price. I'm going to explain why. But firstly, as everybody knows, about a month ago, I got my YouTube channel hacked. My identity was stolen. They got into my Google account. All of my videos on my channel were completely gone and it was promoting some crypto scam. It was a terrifying experience. And since then, I have been massively beefing up my internet security and my backups. I even spent $1,500 on this fancy NAS system because I want to have you know, a backup in case this kind of problem occurs again. But as always, prevention is the best cure. And by far the most affordable part of my protection package comes in the form of my VPN. Atlas VPN is just $1.99 per month and it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. I'm really grateful that Atlas VPN is sponsoring this video because it's more than just a VPN. It also blocks trackers, malicious links, ads. It lets you know if anybody's trying to steal your data. If your name and your details ever appear on one of those lists, like your information has been compromised, Atlas VPN will let you know. Everybody should be using a VPN. It is an absolute no brainer. And I haven't noticed any slowdown in speed, not even when I'm streaming high definition videos. Like I've been recently watching season five of Better Call Saul, which I wasn't ordinarily able to do because it doesn't appear on Netflix Australia, but I just load up Atlas VPN. I pretend that I'm in London and then suddenly I can watch that show. That ability alone to change locations and to expand the library of your streaming services means that Atlas VPN more than pays for itself. Like I mentioned before, they have an incredible deal running at the moment. $1.99 a month over a three-year subscription. Absolutely incredible. So click the link in the description box below, head over to Atlas VPN and get started. Okay, back to the video. I want to explain to all of the women who have been participating in hookup culture why the decision to suddenly raise the transactional price of sleeping with you is not going to work. Firstly, men are not going to see you as a genuine victim of circumstance. You're not a victim of hookup culture. You actively participated in it. That was a choice that you made. You took the lazy route of inflating your ego with easily obtainable sexual validation from men instead of building genuine character, forming real bonds with people. You made a choice and you got to benefit from that. You got that ego boost, but there is a price to pay and that's that you're less desirable in the future. Also, you are not a victim of the types of men that you slept with. Now, I have no doubt that you've probably been with some awful guys who treated you badly, but you made a choice to sleep with those types of men. If you're honest with yourself, you know that you're not a victim. You chose to sleep with that type of guy because he was really good looking. He's really charming or confident. Perhaps he's a little bit dangerous, but the very characteristics that you found so appealing in him at a superficial level are also the same characteristics that probably led to him treating you badly. Those types of men are a moral hazard. You know with the dangerous bad boy type that he's probably going to give you a fun evening, but you're probably also going to get your feelings hurt. This is not a surprise. This comes with the territory of dating that kind of guy, but you made a choice to do it anyway. I'm telling you, men have very little sympathy for women who choose to sexually reward terrible men. Men aren't going to see you 
as a victim, especially if you've done it multiple times. And just because you've said that you've changed and you don't wanna think about the past anymore, you just wanna forget it, that doesn't mean that men are gonna forget. That information, the way that you used to conduct yourself is highly relevant for men. Suddenly, you decide that you're going to raise the price of sleeping with you. It used to be very low. It used to be that men just needed to hang out with you, but now you want commitment. Now you wanna be spoiled and taken out on dates. Well, understand, men are not gonna to wanna to pay that price. The reason is that no man wants to feel like he's a sucker. Nobody wants to feel like they're getting a bad deal. And of course, while it's true that men want love and companionship and pair bonding and all that stuff, it shouldn't be controversial to acknowledge the fact that one of men's primary reasons for getting into a committed relationship with a woman is access to sex. As I explained in this video, when you break down the dating market into sort of raw economic terms, you basically have women with the access to sex and men with access to commitment and they trade with each other, always trying to negotiate for the best possible price. If a man can successfully sleep with a lot of women without giving much commitment or resources away, he's going to feel like he's got a really good deal. And so you see the predicament for the man that you want a commitment from after you've spent your early 20s sleeping around in hookup culture. A bunch of other guys had to do barely anything to sleep with you. All they had to do was hang out with you. Whereas suddenly you're requesting commitment from him. You're saying that he needs to spoil you and take you out on dates. Well, how is he meant to feel like he's not a sucker in that instance? The message seems very clear to him that he must be an inferior man if he has to work that much harder to obtain what other men got so easily. Now, I understand that your decision to no longer participate in hookup culture isn't actually about him. It's about you. You feel like you've changed. You've got different values. You even say that you perhaps value him more because you're taking this relationship more seriously. But you have to understand that's your experience. That's how you see it. That doesn't negate his experience. I would encourage women in this position to step outside of themselves, to stop being so self-absorbed and actually consider what this experience must be like for the man. Consider for a moment how he feels. He wants to sleep with you and you say, Okay, but first, I need a lot of commitment. I need to be spoiled. I need to be taken out on dates. I need you to jump through all of these hoops and then I'll sleep with you. And maybe he's okay with that. Maybe he thinks, all right, that seems like a fair price. Absolutely, I can do that. But then perhaps one night while he's taking you out on a date, you run into one of these guys that you used to hang out with and your boyfriend introduces himself to this fellow from your past, but you notice that the guy that you used to sleep with is looking at your current boyfriend. He's smirking at him with a mix of pity and contempt because he's thinking, oh wow, you know, you're her boyfriend. You have to take her out on dates. She used to just come over whenever I texted her and sleep with me. It was that easy. Looks like you're going to have to put in a lot more work. I guess that shows what kind of a man you are that you need to go to so much effort. I know it's not what you intended, but you need to understand that experience is humiliating for a man. That's going to be terrible for his sense of self-worth, for his self-esteem. Why would he want to be in a position where he has to put in so much more effort and work so much harder than other men? How's that going to make him feel good about himself? Now, in case I'm still not getting through to you. It's just so difficult for you to empathize with men and what they might feel. Let me try and put this in terms that you might understand. Let me relate it to the female experience. Let's say there's a, a boy that you're dating and you're getting on really well and you want him to take you on an expensive holiday. And he says, oh, well, that's a lot of expenditure of my resources to treat you to that. But, you know, let's see how things go. What he really wants is evidence, some proof that you're into him, that you're committed to making him happy. You know, before he treats you to this expensive holiday, how are you going to treat him? And so you embark on like six months of an intimate relationship, lots of sex, you know, trying, you know, all the kind of sex things that he wants to make him happy. And then, yes, after all of that, he takes you on that expensive holiday. But now imagine... You arrive there and you think you're having a fantastic time, but suddenly you run into his ex and she's like, oh, wow, you came here again. And you're thinking, what, what did he take his ex-girlfriend to the same holiday destination? And so you ask and she replies, oh yeah, I think we came here on our second date. How would you feel in that situation? That you just put in six months of keeping him happy, of pleasing him in the bedroom in order to obtain this, only to find out that he gave it away for basically nothing you know, on the second date with a girl. This is the exact question that I asked women at a university and I found their responses absolutely fascinating. You gotta check that video out. Hopefully now you're beginning to see why men are reluctant to commit to formerly promiscuous women. And you've also gotta remember that there are evolutionary concerns here as well. You know, instincts of fear because every man looks at a woman who used to be promiscuous and think, 
Oh God, if we have children, are they going to be mine or has she slept around with other men? Paternity certainly is a huge deal for men. It's a deeply rooted, terrifying instinct. And of course, the science also shows that women who've slept around a lot have a lot more difficulty pair bonding, a lot more likely to end in divorce, a lot more likely to cheat. I know that this is just statistics. It doesn't necessarily speak to who you are as an individual, but can we at least acknowledge that as a man, it makes a lot of sense to take this stuff into account. Do you see why we're concerned about partnering up women who have slept around a lot. And I also have to mention that men are highly suspicious of women who claim to have had this epiphany in their later years that suddenly they don't want casual sex anymore. They're not interested in hookup culture. Now they really want to be treasured and valued because they've seen the error of their previous ways. A lot of men doubt the sincerity of women. Is that really the reason why you suddenly want to make this change? Or is it the fact that you can no longer attract the same quality of men that you used to sleep with? Back when you were young and gorgeous, you had your pick of the men. They were all interested in you. But now that you're older and less desirable, those same men aren't hitting you up anymore. And now suddenly you're like, oh, I was never interested in that anyway. I've changed, now I want a commitment. Do you see why men would be suspicious? Especially if that man knows that he's the type of guy that you would have ignored or dismissed when you were at your peak. You know, when you're at your absolutely most desirable, you know, young and gorgeous and everybody wanted you. If you wouldn't have paid any attention to him back then, suddenly, because you're no longer in such demand, don't you see that he's going to be suspicious of well, why do you want me now? Is it just because you can't get anybody else? Why would I want to be your consolation prize? I'm worth more than that. Now, I understand that I've spoken quite passionately in this video, but please understand, I'm not trying to defend or justify all of these thoughts, all these feelings as though they're perfectly rational. I'm just trying to explain to women, this is how a lot of men feel. You can do with that information what you want. If you want to dismiss all of these concerns as, oh, that's just low quality men who are paranoid you know, who cares what they think. That's completely up to you. Personally, if you're taking my advice, I would say use your early 20s to not indulge your ego and to validate your desirability. Use your peak desirable times when you're most attractive to try and find a high quality man to settle down with in a long-term relationship because the good times are not gonna last forever. But if you use your peak attractiveness to find a fantastic guy, then that's gonna be happiness that lasts an entire lifetime. If you haven't seen it, check out this video. I go into whole detail about that strategy. But now I wanna finish the video by addressing the men who are listening. I wanna to speak to you directly because I think it's important that you know that from my perspective, your concerns, your suspicions about dating formerly promiscuous women, all those feelings are completely valid, but I would encourage you to not be too black and white about this. Women are capable of sincere regret. Not all of them, probably not most of them, but there are some women out there who experimented with sleeping around when they were young because they were desperate, they were unhappy, maybe they came from you know terrible households, they had a bad upbringing, so they tried it out for a little while, genuinely found it to be an awful, distressing experience, they didn't like it, and so they sincerely changed. That is absolutely possible, and if you're a high quality man, I would trust your judgment to be able to tell when a woman is just coping and she's settling or if she's made a sincere change and she's got a better value system than she used to have. I'm mentioning this because I've had some Hey Hero requests recently with guys who are considering, you know, settling down with women who had this past like eight, 10 years ago, you know, when they're fresh out of high school, they slept around a lot and the men are worried, like, am I getting a bad deal? Am I being an idiot here? How can I trust her in the future? And it's incredibly concerning to me that while their feelings are valid, they're not seeing the bigger picture here. Is she still like that? Does she still sleep around? Does she seem to have made a genuine change? Does she treat you well? How long have you been dating? Has she been a high quality woman? Is there any evidence to suggest that the way she was in the the past and how she's going to be in the future because if the answer is no then you'd be so foolish to hold that against her to the point of losing the relationship you could be losing a fantastic opportunity to settle down with an incredible woman simply because she made some mistakes in her past nobody's perfect everybody's constantly growing and changing like you maybe you used to be a total simp and you used to commit to women far more than was actually justified you know do you want a woman to be able to look past that and consider who you are now i guess what i'm trying to say is that while you're concerned concerns and your feelings are totally valid, please never forget that high quality women are rare. They're very rare. And so if you have found a good woman, be very cautious that your concerns are really legitimate before you lose her over something like this. Here's an interesting question. What are you meant to do if you really hit it off with a woman, but you're not sexually attracted to her? In so many ways, her personality would make for the perfect girlfriend, but physically you're just not there. How are you meant to proceed? 
That's the topic of my latest Patreon video. If you want access to that, then please go and sign up on my Patreon. It's highly affordable and it's really good content. We've got 200 plus exclusive videos on that platform, an amazing community. I release new videos there twice a week. The value is amazing and I'd love to see you over there so that you can be a part of it.